Welcome to another Dusty Day in the Shop. Today we're gonna make, yep, you guessed it, the Slive Edge Headboard. This project started off by taking a short trip to meet up with my really awesome local wood supplier, Richard, to pick out the slab. The wife and I decided on these two maple slabs. They were each about 10 feet long. Richard knows I don't have the biggest shop or tools, so he offered to help me safely cut up these slabs into a more manageable size and removed one live edge from each slab. If you're in North Carolina, definitely check out Richard's Craftwood or check out his website. Back at my shop, we ran the slabs through the thickness planer on a planer sled to get one face flat. After emptying the vacuum half a dozen times, we flipped the slab over and ran it through without the sled to get the other face flat. Once done with both slabs, we could get a better idea of just how cool this wood is. I hope it asks me to write a letter of recommendation, because I could go on and on about its character. Richard's sawmill left us with rough cuts, so next we had to cut it to its finished width. If I had a jointer, I would have jointed this edge. My first attempt left a cut that was far less than ideal, so after a quick blade change, the new blade cut through this hard maple like a hot knife through a kid in a candy store. Now that the two faces and one edge were cut to finished dimensions, we needed to cut off both ends to its finished length which in my case for a king size bed is 71 and a half inches. We went back and forth on whether or not to fill the bug holes and ultimately decided to do so with sawdust and thin CA glue. Now, before I go any further, I do want to say this project was heavily inspired by Johnny Brooks video from the Crafted Workshop. For his headboard, he burned his live edges, which I thought looked really nice. After hitting the live edges with my propane torch, it was time to sand off any bits of the faces that might have been burned and sand smooth the bug holes that we filled with sawdust. Before finishing, it is of course important to sign and date your work. And for the finish, we used a matte water-based polyurethane to maintain the natural color of the wood and avoid yellowing. We're so glad we filled the bug holes because after a few coats, these slabs felt super duper nice to the touch. Now on to the legs. This is a white oak billet that I also picked up from Richard. I thought my table saw had just enough height to split this into two legs, but it turns out I was almost a quarter inch short. No big deal, I can finish the cut with a handsaw. And after sawing by hand for a little while in my very hot garage, I had the idea to split the wood, seeing I still had to clean up all sides of it anyway. Well, due to my lack of any sort of decent wedge, that did not work. Then I thought to use my jigsaw, which unfortunately is a pretty terrible one it was actually taking longer than my handsaw, so finally, I decided it'd be best to finish the cut with the handsaw after all. I ran them through my planer to get two flat faces, and ran one edge through my table saw on my jointing jig to get one straight edge. I could then reverse the piece and remove the jig to get the other edge straight on my table saw, which revealed this beautiful grain pattern. One reason, why white oak is one of, if not, my favorite species of wood. Before sanding, I drilled holes where the dowels would connect the legs to the maple slabs. As a finish, we decided to dye the legs black with India ink, which was slightly nerve-wracking for me since this oak has such beautiful grain and I had never worked with the ink before, so I wasn't quite sure what the end result would look like. Well, in my opinion, it turned out beautifully, and we jokingly started to refer to the legs not as white oak, but as black oak, seeing that the grain was still all visibly there, but black. I will definitely be trying this method again in the future. 
Seal it all in, we sprayed a few coats of a satin water-based polyurethane. Once the dial is worn in place, the headboard is done. This was a heck of a project to take on, mostly due to its size. So even though I was excited to have finished this project, we still had to move this massive hunk of a solid wood headboard into place. When we did, I was happy to see that it looks good in place and fits great. I have a video on the matching nightstand, so definitely check that out if you are interested. If you like this video, please show me by giving me a thumbs up and please consider gently caressing that subscribe button as well. At the time of posting this video, I've just passed 300 subscribers, which is 299 more than I thought I would ever have. So thank you, thank you, thank you for subscribing. You can also find me on Instagram where I post updates on my projects as I'm making them. Uh, I post final product shots, stuff like that. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.